everyone, so today I had this really cool idea where I'm going to share with you guys some of my show and theatre stories. I love when things go wrong on stage or like in a rehearsal or I just live for show stories. So I'm doing this because I'd really like to hear all of your guys' ones and I'm doing this because I was watching Carrie um, Hope Fletcher, Tom Fletcher's sister who does a lot of musical theatre and she was sharing some stuff and I was just like, I've been there girl, I know how you feel. So that is why I thought I would share with you some stories from my theatre past. So uh, for those of you that don't know, I studied um, theatre performance, musical theatre, did the whole thing um, through college and university and I, I loved doing it at high school as well. So I've got quite a few stories up my sleeve. This isn't all the stories, but this is some that have came to my head when I was thinking about this video. So, um, <laughs> so I keep laughing because like some of them are really good, but they might not be funny to you, but they're funny to me. But we'll see how it goes and hopefully you guys find this a bit of entertainment to watch for a bit. So my first show was we were doing Wizard of Oz in high school. This isn't the typical Judy Garland Wizard of Oz. This was one that a drama teacher of ours wrote and it was really, really cool and it was different and um, it had new songs and it was really, really fun. But this actually happened when we were doing a gala concert at the high school. So <laughs> basically the school had had its 40th anniversary and the school show cast were invited to come and perform for, you know, visitors and um, basically just to advertise the show, just like come see it in the summer and all this kind of stuff. So we had this really cool like 60s kind of dance vibe song for the Wicked Witch. So the girl is out singing her Wicked Witch, Wicked Witch song and the whole cast is standing in a semicircle at the back of the stage and we're all giving it a little bit of boogieing and loving life. And all of a sudden at the back of me, I just hear somebody scream like somebody's just like attacked them. And I just heard, and I'm hearing this screaming. I'm going, what the hell is that? And I turned around and my dear friend, uh, Nicole Anderson, if you're watching this, sorry for name dropping, but something had happened to her leg it either I think she dislocated like her leg or her knee or something and later we found out that it like popped out and popped back in again and it was very very painful for her so she collapses to the ground and we're all kind of doing this and the girl who's playing the Wicked Witch is in front of the stage so she can't see anything that's going on so we're kind of stopping looking looking at the back and our teacher Alan was at the back like doing the sound and Adine <laughs> obviously did not clock this and they uh, I think he thought the screaming was like somebody's kid. So he like turned up the music and all of us get drowned out. Be like, stop, stop the show. She's hurt. So um, they kind of got the information to the back and poor Nikki had to get like <laughs> carted off the stage. And it was just a bit like, oh my God. And then we did um, the finale song. And then we did the Wicked Witch song again for the second performance. And then we got to like the second finale song to which we get cut off by Alan over the tunnel. We've just been like, so guys, the ambulance is here to pick up Nikki. So we're going to have to stop again. So um, yeah, so a girl um, dislocated her leg whilst we were performing. But luckily that was not the full blown show. But yeah, that was kind of one of my first major like, oh my God, this is like a major mess. <laughs> But it wasn't her fault. She's fine. Her leg's fine. And it's all good now. But it was funny. So then I skipped forward to when I was in college. And we did Animal Farm. <laughs> and um, Animal Farm. I'm not into shows like that. I'm not into depressing shows. I like some fun, quirky, funny theatre. But I don't mind a little bit of serious. And for this show, I went and auditioned not knowing anything about it. Not reading the book. So all I knew was Oscar... Uh, Oscar... Boxer, sorry. Box of the Horse is one of the main characters and I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll go for that one, that's fine. Read the script, learned the script, went in for the audition and I went, I realised I was in the audition by myself so I read for Boxer and then the director was like, okay, that, that was great, that was great, come come sit down. Come. So I sat next to him and he's like, would you be willing to wear platform shoes? And I was like, um, sorry? And he was like, well, because you're, how old are you? And I'm like, I'm five foot three. And he's like, would you be willing to wear platform shoes that kind of, they're flat, but they're like high, like Lady Gaga would wear. And as soon as I heard the word Lady Gaga, I was like, uh-huh, yeah, I can do that, uh-huh. Um, so I bought these platform shoes that were black and kind of tall like that because the other guy they'd cast and the other cast of it, because we had two cast, he was like six foot <laughs> and I was like five foot three having to wear these shoes to get to at least some kind of height that was near his. Oh my God. So, 
I'd rehearsed the whole time with these shoes on and um, it was not bad. It was a bit difficult at places, but it was fine. I got used to it um, and it was fine. Then we get to show night and um, I'm walking about in my shoes. Everything's fine. I, I, and spoiler alert for Animal Farm, Boxer is killed in some part of the show. And um, at the end of the show, I get like lifted up by two animals and then they like pull me to the back through a curtain and then that's the that's me that's the last you see of me and that's what the set of the stage was it was like a flat stage with a curtain at the back with some set hiding behind that and some characters and then two wings at the same but to get to the wings you had to really like climb through the curtain so I die I go off the stage I'm looking at my shoes I'm like I need to get these shoes off because I'm killing my they're, they're killing my feet I step to the side of the stage and I don't know how I did it, but I stepped on the curtain, nearly took the full curtain with me, and um, all of a sudden I opened my eyes and I had fell on my arse. <laughs> and so, say this was like side stage, like this side of the camera, my head just went like that, and I just lay there looking at the side of the audience going, oh shit. And I had them, this like kind of hat, like horse hat on, and I just lay there with this horse hat, like, and the next line in the show was literally someone standing up going, Boxer is dead, and I just was lying there on the stage like, yeah, 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 okay, and I had to like, slide, drag myself off, and it was just the most awkward, horrible experience ever, and I don't even know who seen it and who didn't, I just seen the cast at the back of the stage, and kind of just looking at me like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know, I fell, I'm sorry. So yeah, that was kind of horrible. Plus, I remember my friend Douglas had this massive, um, I think it was like a, a goat or something, he just, but it had massive horns on it. And I just remember I was in the other cast, I was playing like an animal and we were messing about with hay on the stage, we were messing about the hay. And I just remember turning around and I just seen this giant goat's head emerged from the darkness and I, all I heard was my friend Douglas's voice just like hello are we ready for animal farm tonight and I lost it <laughs> and that was me for the rest of the show I lost it it didn't even matter I didn't care if I was getting assessed on it I did not care I lost it and luckily I wasn't playing my main character so I was just it was great so then I skipped forward to when I went into HND and uh, we did Panto and I think all of my theatre friends, if you guys are watching this, you guys remember how much stuff <laughs> went wrong in Panto. We did it in the tall ship, if those of you that don't know, it's like next to this, uh, the Transport Museum in Glasgow and um, yeah, we did like three shows a day, two were for schools and one at night for the adults and oh, it was hard going but I loved it. So I was playing the part of the wazir, which is literally like the fairy godmother. And um, me and my friend Rachel would alternate. So she was playing the wazir and I would do like, I would help with the music. Because I got, like we got really involved with doing the sound and stuff like that. So it was really fun. And then we would switch and I would play the wazir and Rachel would do the music. Um, and yeah, just lots of things went wrong in Panto. <laughs> it was great. I, I loved Panto. That was one of my favourite shows. So we were doing Sinbad the Sailor. So um, we had a show where we had... Uh, dance thriller and uh, I remember coming out to dance it and I, t I looked down and somebody had knocked over like a basket full of baubles that were meant to be treasure and see trying to see like eight members of a cast trying to dance thriller trying not to like trip on their arse on a bobble it was the best experience <laughs> and then it ended up everybody kind of just ditched the dance and was like we need to pick these up <laughs> um I remember my friend Douglas um I was doing some sound and I think he'd like he'd messed up a line or forgot a line and I remember he was wearing a massive cape and he was like six feet tall and he took the princess girl playing the princess under his cape and he said his line and then he went under the cape and emerged back up and I was like what the hell and then at the end of the show I found that he was underneath there going what's my line what's my line what's my line? <laughs> it was so good um, we had a, a really cool experience with the kids from the school where they would just say, they're kids, they can say what, they say what they want, they say what they think. So we get to the end of the show and Sinbad has the, the bad guy, his name was Sinestro. He was on like the ground, kind of like, oh my God. And Sinbad's holding like a sword to him and, and he turns to the kids and every day the kids, you know, you, he turns to the kids and be like, what do I do with him? And the kids, you know, be like, oh, I'll kill him, chop off his head. And it was always so funny. This one time it went completely silent and this one kid just stood up and went, finish him. And that was it. I seen everybody lose it. <laughs> like, we were all just standing there like, it was so good. Um, I'm trying to think. We had a boy that was ill during Panto and he literally, sorry for too much information, he literally was doing a scene, would run to the back of the boat, 
basically be sick and then come back and do the next scene and then run back and be sick again. And I don't know, like, if anybody has an excuse to not get through a show because of something stupid, I always tell them that story. I'm like, that, honey, some guy literally was ill and still carried on. <laughs> so I'm just saying. We also had one time where we had a lightsaber reveal at the end and it was meant to be Kylo Ren's lightsaber. And uh, for some reason, I was sitting doing the music at this point and for some reason it had been forgotten. And it's a boat, so you have like the top deck and then you have like where our dressing room was, which was below deck. And then I remember one of the girls that was playing, like I think she was playing one of the villains. They realised they'd forgot it and she went, hang on. And I just heard her footsteps run right to the back of the boat. And I could feel like her foot running, I could feel her patting under deck to go get this lightsaber, come back and run back again. But honestly, she's trying to fill that silence. <laughs> she'd run off, it was like, oh, okay. But yeah, Panto was just full of fun experiences. Um, so the next show, the next show is called Thebans. And we did this, this was the next show in HND that we did. And we have so many memories of this show. It was a very, for me... It was a very a serious Greek mythology show um, and it had a Greek chorus and then we all had a principal part. So see, trying to learn this principal part, lots of lines. I was okay because I wasn't on that much, but everybody else like had massive, like they were on the full play, but then also were on like the full time playing a chorus member and having to learn both parts. That was a hell of a learning experience, which I'll never forget because I really liked the idea of like, I learned all that and I think I'm, it made me feel like I'm capable of doing anything. Um, but yeah, it was a really grueling rehearsal process for some people and maybe everybody, I'm not sure. But yeah, it was just really hard going. But Theban, <laughs> so as the chorus, we had this whole thing for the start. We had, we all had a line, we all had movement, we all had places to be. Our director was so excited about it. There was lighting, there was a bit, there was a mention of a sphinx and we all created a sphinx on stage and he was loving life. We get to the first show and I'm standing, so I play, was playing Tiresias, and I'm standing off side stage, and I remember, I, I knew, I always know in my head when I should be kind of getting ready to go on. So the show had begun, and I, I had a scene at the start, and a scene at the end. So my scene at the start was coming, and I stood there as Tiresias, and then all of a sudden, I could hear, like, the lines going, and then I was like, that is not right. <laughs> that is a bit quick. And I was thinking, nah, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just, like, overthinking it, and... You know, and I'm thinking, but did that happen? Did that movement bit happen? Did the Sphinx happen? At the end of the show, I find out <laughs> the girls come back into the change room and they go, oh my God, we completely that up. And I was like, what happened? They're like, that, eh, somebody skipped forward six pages of dialogue, I want to say. <laughs> six pages. Which meant, I remember my mum coming out at the end of that show going, so, um, what what was that beginning about? And I was like, Mom, I was like, you don't want to know. Like, she was just like, what happened at the start? It made no sense. And I was like, I wonder why. Six pages, <laughs> something like that. So uh, our director, that's the first time I've seen a director come backstage and tell us that the show was shit. Because <laughs> he, he Sphinx was not there. He was absolutely raging. <laughs> it was so good. Um, also, there was a part where I had to come out and I was I was playing a blind character, so I had a big scarf over my eyes, so I couldn't quite see. And uh, I remember I had to come out in the second scene I was in and sit on a box and then get up and do some dialogue. And I came out, and I remember my friend and Rachel and I were alternating again parts. So we always, we had like a thing going where we were like, we'll tap your back when the box is right behind your bum, and then you can sit down. So this one time, I felt Rachel's like, you know fingers like clutching at my shoulders and I'm going is she okay she just felt really nervous and I was like huh and I go to sit down I have a cane I go to sit down and all of a sudden I don't feel Rachel's hands leave me and I'm thinking something's not right something's went wrong and what had happened was the fight scene previous with the two boys had broken so we had um a couple of boxes lying about wooden boxes and uh that was pretty much the set and uh, they broke it <laughs> They broke one of them so I came out not knowing this playing a blind character having to sit down and I sat down on the box and I could feel my whole body went back into Rachel and then I could feel the whole great chorus behind me going we need to catch this bitch if she falls <laughs> and I could, I could feel and I pulled myself up with my cane it is the most core strength I've I had core strength that day that I never knew I had and I, I got up but honestly and then the scene after that was there was a girl that had to stand on top of the box and wear a noose around her neck like she'd just obviously taken her life. And um, 
thank God that they gave her the right box because <laughs> otherwise we would nearly had a cast member die <laughs> on stage. So yeah, that was that was an experience. Um, so yeah, Thebans was something. Um, the next one is when I was in Legally Blonde and I was playing Paulette, which who she owns the salon and she kind of helps Elle Woods get back in her feet again. And there was a show where I totally forgot a cue. And uh, I, I finished the bend and snap number and I'm walking up to my change room and I'm looking at the girls. There was a great chorus in that show as well. And I'm looking at the girls' great chorus like, yeah, that totally, that was a good number. Loved it. Sat in my changing room, changed my top over to the next bit, and then all of a sudden, I was meant to have a phone call with Elle in the next scene, and all of a sudden, I can hear over the tannoy, Hi, Paulette, what's up? And I sat in my changing room with my mic on, forgetting that my mic will be on, and went, Oh, shit. And it came out, like, people, it like, literally echoed in the auditorium <laughs> for people, like, to hear, going... And I could feel people going, she's up now changing them, not realising that she's meant to be here. So every show after that, I brought my top downstairs to put on, but, um, but and I ran, I bolted down, I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, and I was crying. They were like, no, it's fine, she improvised, she got through it, it'll be fine. I literally wanted to die, but that wasn't the worst experience, show experience I've ever had, people. The last one I want to talk about is the, the show we did after that, um, Le sorry, Legally Blonde was in university, so the next show after that was I was in Beauty and the Beast. So to get the role of Mrs. Potts, I did an audition and I remember the guy who was the musical director was like, oh, I'll just, um, I'll just follow you. And I was like, brilliant. And I was singing Journey to the Past from Anastasia. And all of a sudden, I, he would just wanted to go home. He was like, dee, 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 dee. and I've never sang a song so fast in my life. I was like, heart, don't fail me now. Like I had it all nice and slow, nice and lovely. And I was singing it like this, trying to like keep up with him. So... That was to get the part. Then when I got the part, we rehearsed it that I was going to have a big skirt and hold my hands like this the full show. Costume gets there. It's a massive teapot from my neck to my hips with two little things to come out, um, two little holes, sorry, for my hands to hold the trolley. And then I get to the trolley and it's a, the most misbehaving trolley ever. And I've, I nearly killed Trip. I ran over someone. Um... I'm trying to think what else. I, it was just Mrs. Potts. There's so much video evidence I can show you guys of me playing Mrs. Potts, of how I loved playing the role. It was a brilliant show. The set was amazing, but that trolley was the worst prop experience I've ever had during a show. And the fact that there was a human in it playing Trip, and I literally nearly broke her neck because I crashed it into the stairs one time. It was great. So... Um, yeah, <laughs> so hopefully, um, I've kind of rushed through this, I don't have a lot of camera time left, but um, hopefully this guy, this gives you guys a bit of a laugh um, about theatre experiences and things like that, but please feel free to share yours, I'd love to hear some to cheer us up over this whole situation that we're in, I'd love to hear some stuff to just give us a laugh, and yeah, so hopefully you guys found this funny, um, yeah, and entertaining, and uh, yeah, uh, hopefully I'll get to hear your guys through soon, bye!